Hello, YouTube fam. Welcome back to our channel. I am Mystic, your host, and today we're embarking on a deep dive into an ancient mystery that has left scholars and theologians scratching their heads for centuries. Who killed Cain? To understand this mystery, we'll be turning to the Midrash, a rich source of Jewish commentary and interpretation, and the Bible, to uncover the hidden layers of this ancient tale. Knowledge, patterns, physical power. Before we get into the nitty gritty details, let's set the stage. We know from the book of Genesis that Cain, after committing the first murder by killing his brother Abel, feared for his life. But what exactly was he afraid of? Why would Cain, a murderer himself, suddenly worry about someone seeking revenge? Who did he fear? The answer lies in a surprising twist. It wasn't other humans he feared, but the animal kingdom. Let's listen to our informed friend, Adam. He has the 411 and will reveal to us this ancient mystery. Unraveling the Enigma. Who killed Cain? A journey through Midrash. Exploring Cain's fear. So why would Cain, the killer of Abel, worry about becoming prey to animals? It all stems from the mark that God placed upon him as a form of protection. It's not that God promised vengeance to humans who might harm Cain. Rather, it was a promise of protection against the wild beasts. Cain's sudden fear arises from the realization that he now shares a vulnerability with the animal world. It was just another chapter in the same saga at the beginning of time with their parents. In the eternal struggle to define our humanity amidst the wild forces of nature, the Cain and Abel story symbolizes a profound battle. It's a war that revolves around how we grapple with our inner passions and creative urges. Cain, enamored by his power to create alongside God, sacrificed everything in his intoxicating quest for life from the earth, even his bond with the divine and his brother's life. Abel's blood became unwitting fertilizer for Cain's ambitions. Yet in the aftermath of this tragic failure, Cain faced an undeniable truth. He stood on the edge of a world where the line between humanity and the animal kingdom blurred. Not because beasts sought vengeance for Abel's death, but because they recognized the same primal urges within Cain. The divide between man and beast dissolved, leaving Cain to confront the untamed world with newfound fear and humility, unraveling the sevenfold vengeance. But here's where the mystery deepens. Why did God promise Cain sevenfold vengeance? And what does this phrase even mean? It's a riddle wrapped in an enigma. Many have wondered why God extended this promise to Cain, a murderer. After all, it wasn't a courtesy he offered to the innocent Abel, who fell victim to Cain's wrath. Let's get some revelation from the Midrash now. Let's turn to the Midrash for answers. In a lesser known story from this commentary, we encounter Lamech, a blind descendant of Cain, and his son Tuval Cain, a child weapon maker. In this narrative, Lamech mistakenly kills his own ancestor, Cain, with a bow and arrow. This shocking event hints at a deeper meaning. Now let's start connecting the dots. So, the sevenfold vengeance isn't about punishment for Cain's killer. Instead, it alludes to God's promise that Cain himself would eventually meet his end in revenge for Abel's murder. But here's the twist. This vengeance would occur after seven generations. To add to the intrigue, if we follow the genealogical tables, we find a mysterious declaration made by a seventh generation descendant of Cain. Who? Let's explore the Lamech connection. Enter Lamech, who has two wives and four children. His story intertwines with Cain's legacy as he accidentally kills Cain himself, setting off the promised vengeance. It's a tale of unintended consequences. The Forgotten Books of Eden, the second book of Adam and Eve, chapter 13. Lamech, the blind, lived in those days. He was one of the sons of Cain. He had a son whose name was Atan, and the two of them had many cattle. Lamech was in the habit of sending them to graze with a young shepherd who tended them. He was coming home in the evening when he went to his grandfather. 
his father a ton, and his mother Hazina. And he wept and he said to them, I cannot feed those cattle alone, or someone may rob me of some of them, or kill me so they can take them. Because among the children of Cain, there was a lot of robbery, murder, and sin. Then Lamech pitied him, and he said, you may be correct. When you are alone, you might be overpowered by the men of this place. So Lamech arose, took a bow he had kept ever since he was a youth, before he became blind. And he took large arrows and smooth stones and a sling, which he had. And he went to the field with the young shepherd and placed himself behind the cattle while the young shepherd watched the cattle. Lamech did this for many days. Meanwhile, ever since God had cast him off and had cursed him with trembling and fear, Cain could not be still or settle nor find rest in any one place. So he wandered from place to place. In his wanderings, he came to Lamech's wives and asked them about him. They said to him, he is in the field with the cattle. Then Cain went to look for him. And as he came into the field, the young shepherd heard the noise he made and the cattle herding together in front of him. Then said he to Lamech, my lord, is that a wild beast or a robber? And Lamech said to him, tell me where he is when he comes up. Then Lamech bent his bow, placed an arrow on it, and fitted a stone in the sling. And when Cain came out from the open country, the shepherd said to Lamech, shoot, behold, he is coming. Then Lamech shot at Cain with his arrow and hit him in his side. And Lamech struck him with a stone from his sling. And the stone struck his face and knocked out both his eyes. Then Cain fell dead instantly. Then Lamech and the young shepherd came up to him and found him lying on the ground. And the young shepherd said to him, It is Cain, our grandfather, whom you have killed, my lord. Then Lamech grieved in bitterness and regret. And he clapped his hands together and struck the head of the youth with his flat palm. And the youth fell as if he were dead. But Lamech thought the youth was pretending. So he took up a stone and struck him and smashed his head until he died. So there you have it. The enigmatic story of who killed Cain. It's a narrative filled with twists, symbolism, and hidden meanings that continue to baffle and fascinate us. Well, thank you, Adam. Indeed, that has been a very intriguing insight into that age-old mystery. So, listeners, what are your thoughts on this ancient mystery? Do you have your own interpretations? Let's keep this discussion going in the comments below. Thank you for joining us on this captivating journey through the Midrash and the Bible, investigating the mysteries of Cain and Abel. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and hit that subscribe button for more thought-provoking content. Until next time, stay curious, keep exploring, and remember that the world is filled with intriguing mysteries waiting to be unraveled. See you in the next video.